think it's on. We're good. Okay, good evening, everybody. With a quorum of members present and the posted time having arrived, I'll call the Finance Committee meeting for Wednesday, November 7th, 2018 to order. Um, we have one agenda item and one addendum for tonight, so this should be a fairly, fairly short meeting. Um, first item is discussion and possible action regarding a sole source purchase with Samuels Group to protect the River Life Development Foundations at an expected cost of $25,000. Um, in your packets, um, you'll see that a purchase of that type requires committee approval. Um, there's sole source documentation that was submitted for this meeting, and this essentially would um, insulate those foundations over the winter so that the new developer, you know, whomever they may be, could take place, uh, begin in the spring, and then not have. Uh, winter damage uh, to those facilities. Um, does anyone have questions on the sole source documentation? Um, we've got Public Works Director Lindman with us if you have questions on that item. If not, they'd like to. The reason we're having the special meeting tonight is because the item is time sensitive and with the weather turning, they want to do it as soon as possible. Dennis, go ahead. Um, and these are the same people that we're fighting a lien over, is that, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Yep. And exactly what are they going to be doing? I mean, these are foundations. You think foundations are normally exposed to the cold. Are they insulating them some way so they don't deteriorate over the winter or so on? No, they're uh, protecting them from frost getting actually underneath them. We typically put footings down in the ground so to get below the frost line. And so we don't want the frost to get underneath because typically what happens is if there's any moisture or anything in the spring, we'll get heaving. And so... Uh, I talked with a, a, a couple different structural engineers. Um, they they weren't, um, you know, as concerned, but um, as best practice, if they were going to be exposed and not backfilled, um, they would recommend uh, doing something to try to uh, mitigate any frost from getting oh, so, underneath the footings. So normally these would be, they would be backfilled and filled up with dirt, so that would use the... Correct. That would insulate them. Okay. That is correct. But just... You know, we had talked about backfilling them as well, but um, according to the drawings, there's still drain tile and everything that still needs to go in. And so, um, you know, rather than backfilling everything, having to have everything dug back up, and there is some piping in there getting that tore out. So this seems to be a better option. Uh, we looked at doing it in-house as well, um, but we just felt that Samuels is the one who put the foundations in, having that full responsibility in them, um, responsible for everything with those uh, and putting those blankets down um, it, it would be the best way to go and they're willing to do that. Exactly what are they going to do to these foundations? Are they going to put foam on, over them or something? Or no, they they're, they're, um, I, I don't know if you've <coughs> ever seen them but they're concrete <coughs> blankets um, typically in cold weather if we pour concrete, place concrete then we put blankets over it to hold the heat in yeah. and so these are like an insulated blanket and they will um, put them down on top of the foundation um, and then up the sidewall and up the sidewall of the foundation wall um, and then that will just help prevent frost from driving into the ground. The other option is we could we could hay them, put hay down to prevent frost from going down but this is just a cleaner way to do it. Okay, thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Okay. Um, with that, do we have a motion to accept the sole source purchase? Uh, motion by Nutting. Is there a second? Second by Kelbach. Further discussion or questions? Hearing and seeing none, members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None are opposed. That motion carries. Um, then the addenda, addendum item that we have is to is discussion and possible action on presenting a jurisdictional offer to the owner of 242 East Thomas Street. And we've got Eric with us on that item as well. I can probably go over this a little bit. Um, it, so throughout this Thomas Street project in our property acquisitions, this is the first property where uh, consideration of a jurisdictional offer uh, within the um, confines of the eminent domain um, um, through condemnation. So um, this is at 242 East Thomas Street, which is the boarding house or, or the small apartment building, which is right across the river on the north side, um, has 14 units in it. Um, we have made offers, we've made counter offers, there's been um, discussions with the owner. Uh, the owner had decided to uh, pursue their own um, appraisal. Um, the due date for that was October 29th. They did not submit anything and they've uh, stopped communication with both the city and MSA. 
Um, and so to continue to move the project forward, we are paying rent loss right now for all of the vacant uh, units. So the longer we string this out, we will continue to pay that. Um, doesn't appear that you know there's going to be a amicable agreement on the value of the property. Um, at a earlier, the finance committee had uh, approved a assessed value plus 10 percent uh, on the top end, and that's what the 225 280 is for the entire parcel, including the building. Um, so I, I, I guess that's with um, the costs and the offers. And now kind of the process moving forward is the letter in the packet is actually a letter drafted by MSA, a real estate consultant. And so what they're proposing to do is upon approval of this tonight, they will submit that letter as an offer to the owner along with a form that if they volunteer, you know, for them to sign if they would like to sell the entire property and just not, not just what's needed for the project. And so um, this, this kind of a last ditch effort is an offer um, for them to come back. If they do not um, come back and talk with us, then um, the approval for a jurisdictional offer and the um, acquiring that property will go to council on the 13th. So that will be on the agenda for next week. And then on the 14th, the jurisdictional offer will be made. Um, and that would be for the property only that we need for the roadway, the building and you know the property we need to build the roadway. So that would be the other value of the 166,800. That would be the jurisdictional offer, but the offer of the total taking would still be on the table. But they would they would need to sign that form, you know, voluntarily right. selling that property. And for clarification, um, just to recognize that any tenants that still reside in that building are still entitled to the um, relocation that they had always been entitled to. I think the owner's lack of a response doesn't impact or negate our responsibility to relocate those tenants. Correct. That's correct. We've we've submitted um, our relocation specialist has anyway um, all of the information to all of those tenants, um, and so they're they're in the process of moving. Okay. I, I believe one another one has just moved uh, in the last couple of days. So okay, I just want to make sure that we had it in the record for anyone who's interested in these meetings that right. you know it's not uh, impactful to the tenants, and we would still continue to work with them. Correct. So okay. Yep. All right. Um, do we have a motion to approve a jurisdictional offer? Motion by Nutting. Is there a second? Second by Martins. Further discussion or questions? Go ahead, Dennis. Is this that place that's <clears throat> right next to the bridge that has the, the rooms for rent? Yes. <clears throat> I see that we indicate that we're still paying rent loss even though the person is no longer communicating with us and we no longer are actually required to do that correct then we should probably quit doing that well I, I think the the thought was is that um, well there's a couple different schools of thought one is we could um, we, we could definitely do that um, being as we've already made the offer we're kind of mo moving forward so by state statute we no longer have to do that um, you know, as a as a sign of good faith, we said we would pay rent loss, and you know, through the end of October, assuming that we would come to an agreement on the purchase of this property. Um, we are moving into November now. The thought was is that um, working with our so we, we have an appraiser, which is MSA or or Compass. Okay, they do the original appraisal. And then we also have a review appraiser, which is John Rawling. And he reviews all the appraisals as, as a third party to make sure that, you know, they're accurate. And, um, and so he has reviewed these offers as well. And we're trying to protect the city the best <coughs> way that we can so that if they decide to come back on a lawsuit, um, that we can show good faith effort in everything that we're doing you know, right up to the point that we take a property for condemnation, that we're, we're not opening ourselves up to any liability and that we've given the owner, you know, every opportunity uh, to do this as well as, um, you know, well, we're what, not what alienating are, him. What are we paying every month? I, I don't know the exact amount, but I think <clears> it's, I think it's right around 14 to 1500 a month, 
for the vacant right. pieces. But you know, we, we are saving quite a bit just because we don't have those rooms that we have to pay relocation on. So it's so it was essentially paying him to keep the units empty that were already empty that, and not fill them with new right. tenants. Because if he filled them with new tenants to get the rent, then we would have had to pay the relocation. Well, the thing about it is, if, if, if we're not required by state by statute right. to pay the rent any longer, then how could we be? If the guy, you know, you can sue anybody. You can sue somebody who so you don't like the color of their socks, but yep. uh, will you prevail or not is is the big deal. Right. So if if we're not required by statute, I don't see how that opens up us up for any type of obligation. If uh, if he does sue us later, if you would think that uh, the courts would say, well, you know, they're not required to pay you. Right. And and and, and you're absolutely right. By law, we do not have to pay. But I, you know, you know, I I feel that it shows that the city has gone above and beyond in good faith. Um, we would only make one more rent loss payment, and that would be for a partial month depending on where that 20 days sits. And so, um, you know, I, I feel like it is a good option for us. And, you know, if this ever does come back on us, that we can show that, we, you know, the city has um, treated everybody more than fairly above and beyond. And I mm -hmm. think that's been the intent of the city and the finance committee moving forward. I, but you're absolutely right, Dennis. By law, no, we, we could have stopped. Um, those payments uh, when we made the first offer to him. Well, you know, and, and I, I can understand your reasoning, and, and believe no. me, I have a great respect for you and your department. But it would appear to me maybe if we quit making those payments, it would uh, make the owner a little more accommodating to come and talk to us and so on. Right, uh, right now he's just sitting there and collecting that money, and um, he doesn't understand that late, you know, later on he may lose out big time because of if we condemn it and take it, you know, are we going to, if we condemn it and take it, are we going to take the whole parcel or just what we need? We, we can only take what we need for the roadway. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I think the other thing with the rent loss too is that, you know, he, he has made comments to MSA that, you know, if, um, if we don't come to an agreement, he said, I'm going to backfill those um, vacant units anyway, and then you'll have to deal with the, with the tenants um, when you acquire the property through condemnation. I guess um, a threat, not a threat, will he follow through? I, I don't know. But the comment has been made a couple different times. Uh, well, if he was to do that, what would be our position? I mean, would we have to then pay rent if he, if he fills those units, or once uh, we've made an offer, if he fills anything after that, is that on him? It, it, it would be on him. I think it, it, help, it does help us cover. You know, if he does backfill those rooms, let's say, um, next week, right, and then we condemn it, we take it, and then we're, we have a, a boarding room, you know, filled with, well, we're not required to pay those people relocation costs, but obviously we're the ones who are going to have to handle having them moved out, you know. So once that property gets transferred to the city, then, you know, we could potentially have 14 residents in there that we have to with the uh, jurisdictional remove. offer assuming we that we approve this tonight and at council once a jurisdictional offer would be made after that date if he would choose to backfill the units there is no entitlement for relocation or for us to deal with that is that correct right and as long as we pay i mean there's really no um obligation for us to pay uh, relocation to any new tenants coming in because right. we have paid rent loss now beyond what we were required to by state statute mm -hmm. and um, you know I, I mean we've gotten above and beyond what we've needed to do so any new tenants that would move in at this point would not be entitled to loss correct okay yeah well, okay. If, one, one last question we condemn this property and we take it is that a long drawn-out procedure or does that move fairly fastly very very fast it's yeah. um they have 20 days <clears throat> on day 21 basically that title gets transferred over that paperwork there's listly there's some legal stuff that has to get done but it's within a month that property will be ours okay thank you All right. you're welcome okay and with a motion and a second on the floor then to present a jurisdictional offer any further discussion or questions <laughs> if not members in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed None are opposed. That motion carries. Thank you. Um, thank you. That concludes the finance agenda for tonight. Um, the ED committee will convene here in just a minute. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn from finance. Motion by Kelbach, second by Smith. Members in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. 
Aye. Aye. We'll stand adjourned.